For the past few years, fans have been pleading Survivor US to introduce another all-returnee season. So while Survivor 46 is yet again an all-newbie cast, I said screw it. I hijacked the theme from the currently airing Australian Survivor, slapped it into Survivor US, and decided to make a dream cast returnee season with nine titans facing down nine rebels. Now this isn't going to be perfect as the original concept deemed individuals as titan or rebel, depending on their real world occupation. However, I'm instead going to be categorizing whether they are a Titan or a Rebel by their original season storyline. First, let's start with the Titans. Unfortunately, we have a really good description of what a Titan is from Queen V. Being a Titan is someone that doesn't give up. Someone that persists no matter what, no matter how rebellious the other side is, we always do everything we can to win. When I think of a titan, I imagine someone painted as an unstoppable force, only to meet their demise when slammed against an immovable object. Therefore, it's pretty fitting to have the first titan be Chantel Smith. Chantel was part of the decimated Ua tribe that collapsed to two people, but unlike most individuals that get an underdog storyline, Shan's was just complete domination, such as by playing Brad or manipulating JD. Coming into the merge, it felt like Shan was going to simply breeze her way to the end with her lieutenant and Ricard and the Black Alliance that could have seen the same success as Big Brother 23's Cookout Alliance. I generally get comments on these videos telling me I made the wrong choices for my cast, but I think we can all agree Jonathan Young is the literal embodiment of a titan. He was an absolute force and literally carried his entire tribe through certain challenges. Plus, in spite of being one of these extremely big dudes, he still had the caveat of actually being quite good at the game strategically, and I think it'd be fun to see Jonathan back, but uh, maybe less on all fours this time. Yet another physical meal was Mike Turner. He's no Jonathan, but he did win challenges, despite being significantly older than the rest of the cast. I don't think Mike realises how close he was to actually winning the game in Survivor 42. All he needed was Marianne to lose fire making for the win, plus Plus, even against Marianne, roughly half the jury were still initially willing to vote for him. While Mike's black and white principles of honour and integrity lost him the game, I do believe these strong values encapsulate what it means to be a titan on the return. While Cassidy or Carla did get a lot of the spotlights for females with strong games in 43, I think Noelle unfortunately gets left in the shadows. Usually in these hypothetical returning seasons, I don't put too much stock into a contestant's personal story, but with Noelle it ties into her survivor journey. Noelle was the third amputee to feature in survivor history, and the first to ever win a challenge, which need I remind you was a challenge that was definitely not friendly to those with prosthetic legs. Even though she had a lot of adversity, Noelle rose up and gained a lot of respect from her fellow cast members for perseverance, which is enough for me. Then on to the 43 winner Gabler. In Gabler's season, he was set up as a smiling assassin, wading under the water like an alligator before striking his prey. Despite some people being underwhelmed by his win, you can't deny he was one final vote away from the cherished perfect winning game in Survivor. Plus, this choice may be a personal bias because, let's face it, not many of us expected Gabler to win 43, so it would be fascinating to see him play a season out in front. On the winner tree, and I also added Jam Jam from Survivor 44. While Jam Jam certainly had the energy synonymous with a rebel, I ultimately settled on him being a titan as once again an indicator of taking the previous game into account. Jam Jam's entire story that season was that if you wrote his name down, then you were out next. It was very a mafia like, and if there is anything survivors taught me, anyone in the mafia is meant to be a titan. This individual was a pre-jury boot, so I know this pick might be a little bit spicy, but Sabaya in Survivor 45 showed off more Titan-related gameplay than some finalists. She had Shan levels of control, and similarly was on a struggling try pre-merge. The difference is Sabaya was always willing to cut close allies like Brandon and Caleb before they turned on her, which I think is an important distinction. While admittedly I feel she was a little too cutthroat, I think envisioning her on the Titans tribe as a returnee is what I'm looking for, and I do believe she can deliver big blindsides. Having an idol is already a massive deal on Survivor, but what about two? Austin may not have won the game, but it was the closest finalist in modern Survivor to the crown, losing in a close 5-3 to three vote. For most 
of the season, Austin ran the game while securely positioned in the majority alliance, having close one-on-one -on -one bonds with Emily, Drew, and of course, Dee. Considering Austin was this season's Boston Rob in many ways, I think he is a very fitting titan, and someone that could go on to win it all. Last but certainly not least, I don't think it would be the Titans tribe without also adding Dee. In my opinion, she played the best modern survivor game, and kind of set the blueprint on how to find success in spite of all the twists and turns. What's incredible about Dee was that she was clocked as a threat early merge, with people understanding she would win, and yet managed to slip by round after round. Plus also having Dee and Austin on the same tribe after their storyline in 45, alongside with what has happened outside of the game is something that needs to be seen. Thankfully Wendell isn't on this cast. We've covered 9 Titans and now on to Rebels. Let's be honest, this is the more fun group to discuss. But before we cover that, I want to shout out a project myself and other influencers in the Survivor community have been working on. Idle Plays. If you log into idleplays.com, you can see Survivor puzzles from the literal show, you can play at home and see how well you would do. I have my own personal box registered with my favourite Survivor challenges from the collection. Also, use code BANDITSURVIVOR to support me as a creator when you make a purchase. The link for this site is in the description of this video, and thanks once again to Idle Place and Russell Muscle for letting me be part of this awesome opportunity. Nevertheless, with Viola, she gave us a very distinct definition of what a Titan means on Survivor. Unfortunately, the person asked to define what a rebel was, was, uh, well, Kelly, and she's not exactly the most articulate person. Life's just about having fun. Just have a freaking party. We're only here once. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Sister, amen. <laughs> So I'm going to have to go with somewhat underdog, misfit and not playing by the status quo as my criteria for this group of nine. Firstly for me, I'm going for Deshaun. I don't know if Rebel is one of the first words you would attribute to a Survivor 41 game, but when you take a step back, he really ticks all of the boxes. Throwing a challenge to eliminate a threat on your tribe at pre-merge and flipping on Shan at the final eight are extremely rebellious acts. Plus, let's not forget this is Deshaun, the man that basically rolled his eyes any time someone made him do something. He's an undeniable rebel in my eyes. Then actually on to the first rebel winner in Erica. To be honest, this casting slot, I'm thinking more so from the producer's point of view, as you just know they would be drooling at the thought of pushing Erica smashing the hourglass as a narrative for her being a rebel. Additionally, Erica had a prominent storyline in the season about people thinking she was a cute and innocent little lamb, only to devour them at the right time. Would she do well in the return, or will the fact that Erica is a known quantity hurt her? Let me know in the comments down below. Tori Meehan may be the most shocking person to make the merge in a Survivor season, given it felt like every round people wanted her out. Tori definitely has rebellious behaviour, and it was often to her own detriment, as right from day one she was on the bottom of the tribe. In spite of this, she barely managed to survive and then won two immunity challenges, giving her an impressive placement in the final 10. Tori showed on Survivor 42, she wanted to do things her way and wasn't willing to bend for anyone. So while it's not great Survivor gameplay, it guarantees her a return on this dream season. The final 42 representative is a pretty easy addition, and that's the final winner to cover in Marianne. So uh, yeah, all well, the winners made this cast. Marianne was the bunny rabbit in the mailbox that charmed the entire cast with her personality, then snuck to the end to claim her crown. I don't think we've seen such an extroverted and authentic individual as Marianne, who let people know they were either going to love her or hate her because she was not going to change anything. Plus she pulled off the very impressive Omar blind side and a 3-2-2 plurality vote split. Jesse will probably go down as the individual that pulled off the biggest blindside in modern Survivor history as he eternally damaged the season's power structure through eliminating his closest ally Cody. While I do think Jesse's overall game is more so that of a titan, I feel production and the casual fan base remember him more so for the final six idol play, so I feel that's justification enough for him to make this tribe. On the other end of the spectrum, someone that constantly attempted rebellions but failed was Owen Knight. I'll be honest, for this slot it was a toss up between Owen or Jake. 
While I do think Jake failed more in his big moves, Owen had a more defining storyline in his Charlie Brown arc. Considering he wasn't afraid to clash with big power players, I think he is yet another good addition. For me, Matthew is one of the biggest what-ifs in modern Survivor history, featuring a very forward mindset for a meta that was relatively undiscovered in the modern era. I've already covered my most robbed video as why Matthew should get a second shot on the show, so if you haven't already, check out this video after it finishes. It was super fun to film. The final 44 representative, however, is someone that nobody will deny outwardly portrays rebel energy, and that's Carolyn Weger. I'll quite frankly never forget the premiere, containing Carolyn finding her feet on what to say for a confessional, before completely dominating the season with her incredible thoughts. No matter what, Carolyn wasn't afraid to voice her opinions or show her emotions, so let's go on ahead and throw her on. Last but certainly not least, I had to get one representative on the Rebels tribe from Survivor 45. To be honest, I don't think this was a contest. We all knew she would make it, and that's Emily. Emily Flippin proved to be a one-of-a-kind last season. She called out Bruce immediately on the barge, then upset her original tribe's power structure, and let's remember she was willing to go to rocks just for Caleb at the third tribal council. If that isn't rebel behaviour, I'm not sure what is. Thanks for watching everyone, subscribe if you enjoyed, and check out this video where we talk about the most robbed survivor contestants. Nevertheless, have a good day. Oh, peace!